Good morning everyone. It's been a moment since we have done a point of view video. This one comes to us from the point of view of L3, the co-pilot that rode with Lando Calrissian. We last saw L3 when she was plugged into the Falcon to help Lando and Solo escape the Maelstrom in the Kessel Run. After that, we didn't see much of any or any of her until now. So without further ado, let's get into it. Chewie, take the Professor to the back and plug him into the hyperdrive. The Falcon's computer watched as Chewie took 3PO to the body of the ship and plugged him into the hyperdrive. The computer was made up of three droids that had been integrated into the ship during the countless upgrades it has had. Rude, V5 said. Search results. Professor. A classification for a sentient being or droid who provides a high level of education. Updating vocabulary. 84 chirped. Yeah, but he is a little too chatty for my taste, said L3. Search results. Chatty. A slang term meaning prone to excessive amounts of speaking. Updating vocabulary. Rude. Still true, though, said L3 as she spotted chewing helping 3PO to stand upright again. I told you this ashtray was unstable, but no one ever listens to, C-3PO was saying as L3 switched to the next set of cams. Systems continue to function at 75%, said V5. No further damage detected, although rear sensors are very chatty, ED4 chimed in. Elevated heart rates detected in the cockpit, V5 mentioned. V5 and ED4 both turned to the cams that L3 was watching in the cockpit. Is this organic courtship? ED4 asked as they turned on the cockpit audio. The collective, which is what L3 called all three of them, continued to watch the cockpit. Captain, being held by you isn't quite enough to get me excited, Leia hissed at Han. Sorry, sweetheart, I haven't got time for anything else, said Han, pushing Leia to her feet. Gross, V5 said in disgust. The collective laughed together at that remark that V5 had made. The only learned to do that when L3 join the group. L3 had refused to lose her name and identity when joining the brain of the Falcon. She helped them to understand that they could be three separate entities without making the ship's computer system weaker. V5T was a transport droid. She was the type that all YT-1300 light freighters had on them to begin with. ED4, who was an espionage splicer droid, joined later when the Falcon got upgraded just before Lando and L3 laid claim to the ship. Their laughter was cut short with the sound of C-3PO coming across the interface as he was inquiring about the state of the ship's hyperdrive. After a lengthy discussion about how they were not the ship's computer but a collective of droids who run the ship, all the while confusing 3PO and not letting him get his question in. L3 finally asked 3PO what his question was and gave him his answer. Tell the flyboy the power coupling is broken, said L3. Where is R2 when I need him, said 3PO as he unplugged from the mainframe of the computer, still trying to grasp at the conversation he had just had. L3 thought about R2 and wondered how he was. She actually enjoyed the astromech droid and the occasional conversations they would have. 3PO told Han about the state of the ship, and with the Falcon hiding in the blind spot of her Star Destroyer, Han decided that they had to find somewhere to hide and do repairs quick. With Han and Leia thinking about where to go, L3 knew this was her chance to find the best possible spot for them to hide. She searched faster than ever she had before. When she came across something that she hadn't seen in ages, she flashed the name of the system in front of Han on the display. Where are we? Leia said. A know it system, Han replied. ED4, attach all the information you can find on the Baron Administrator of Cloud City to our entry on Bespin, L3 said as she searched the greater know it system and saw Bespin with a name attached to it that caught her eye. A know it system? There's not much there. Leia answered as L3 began to adjust the information of Bespin on the display in front of Han. No. Oh wait, this is interesting. Lando, Han said as he noticed the name on the screen. L3 was happy that she was able to find the information that she had longed to see and get Han to notice it as well. She loved seeing Chewie and Han in the ship, but nothing compared to the way Lando and L3 used to run the ship. L3 wanted very badly to see Lando again, and it didn't matter to her if it was only a glimpse. She tried not to admit that she wanted to see him, or how much she missed him because she couldn't hide how much space he took up in her memory. After they landed on Bespin with Leia and Han, as well as the rest of the Falcon, L3 waited patiently to see if Lando would come out to reminisce. How's it going, fellas? Remember, I want this ship fully repaired. Use the best parts we have available. The Collective recognized this voice, but L3 wanted to be sure, so she adjusted the cams to get a better look. They tuned in as he began to stride up the ramp. Landonis Balthazar Calrissian. L3 thought she was prepared to see him, but she was in fact not prepared at all. I miss this ship, Lando said as he entered the cockpit and sat down in the pilot seat. 
It's just not the same without you, L3. Lando laughed in silence, looking at the cockpit and co-pilot chair. V5 and ED4 stayed silent with this statement as to let L3 enjoy this time with Lando. Never gamble with something you can't bear to lose. Lando's voice echoed through the empty ship as he rested his hands on the ship's navigation display screen. L3 couldn't take it anymore. She had to tell Lando that she was there. So she did the only thing she could do that was within her power. The monitor in front of Lando came to life. It showed the map of Bespin, but quickly switched to the map of Kessel, where they last were together. Lando lifted his hands and backed away from the screen, saying, Now that's... something. This chapter sure was an interesting one. Uh, if you're like me, after watching Solo, you often wondered whatever happened to L3 and why they didn't mention her in the later movies. I'm glad that we got to see her here in this book and that she was able to have a conversation with Lando even if it was really only one-sided. I find it very cool that she was integrated into the ship's computer but still didn't want to lose her identity and actually ended up helping the computer become the collective and recognizing that they could be stronger uh, as a group. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And also leave a comment what you think about this chapter. Until next time, remember, may the Force be with you.